Hi everybody, welcome to the Aquatrols video. My name is Christian Spring from the SGRI and I'm joined here today by Graham O'Connor and Michael Fance from Aquatrols. Graham, we've been working with Aquatrols for many years on, on R&D and, and research trials, but I understand that, that kind of the work we're doing this year is very much focused on a, a new range uh, of solutions that Aquatrols are bringing to the market. Can you tell me a little bit about them? Certainly, Christian. Um, well, firstly, I'd like to say once again, thank you for the opportunity to continue the, the work with the STRI. We're really proud of our, our heritage, our background of really bringing um, solution-based uh, products to the market that are backed by solid data. And what we've got here today is we've been presented with a new portfolio of products in the, uh, the Turf RX line of products from Redox. And so what's, what do this Redox line of products bring? What, what, what's their modus operandi, if you like? Yeah, um, Redox will, will, it won't be familiar to the UK market at present. Um, so established 23 years ago in the US, it's only in 2020 that we've actually brought it to market. Hence why it's important to get some solid data from, from here at the STRI for our market here. But basically they've got a 20 23 year history of manufacturing and producing their own product lines uh, and these are kind of the carbon based solutions and that's that's what they manufacture and the agreement that Aquatrols have is to uh, promote the, the, uh, the product line to the turf industry globally. Michael, Graham was talking about carbon-based nutrition. What, what do we mean by carbon-based nutrition? Well, what he's really referring to is already talked about our 23-year history. The founder of Redox really had two key beliefs. He believed the soil system would benefit from more available carbon, and he thought that the application of nutrition wasn't efficient at the time. So was there a way of combining the two? And what he really pioneered was our industry has a background of liquid nutrition and maybe in the early days that was just putting the minerals in a mix, water, mix it up. Uh, the industry really stepped forward with chelation, but that chelation was normally done with a synthetic material. What Redox has really perfected in the last 23 years is using 11 soluble carbon sources to react with minerals in the manufacturing process, but also getting that mineral in the most plant available form. So we have three technologies in, in our manufacturing. They are chelation, complexing, microencapsulation, using those organic soluble carbons. The end result being that those mineral compounds are protected by the soluble carbon that then becomes beneficial in the system and the mineral is totally available to the plant. We're talking about oxycal in this trial. Now, oxycal is a wettable powder in this bucket here. Every single product in the Redox range has a standalone benefit. They also have uh, benefits in tank mixes. But the three benefits that I see of oxycal in the, in the sports turf market are really we're getting recovery from aeration. It's been proven to really narrow down recovery time. Also great in the summer of this year, for heat stress. But the purpose of this trial was to really show the benefit of oxycal in increasing photosynthetic activity. So Michael, can you, how can you substantiate the claims regarding oxycal and in particular photosynthesis? Well, Christian, I'm really glad you asked that question because the key principle of redox is to put the plant first. Can we put the needs of the plant before the reliance on what has been known in our industry as, as standard programs of nutrition, standard programs of using plant protection products, etc. So we know that biotic stress is normally preceded by abiotic stress. A particular abiotic stress I referred to with this product, as I said, was its ability to cope with shade conditions. Now, Oxycal itself, from the Turf RX range, it boosts plant enzymes and polyphenols. So when we're looking to grow in an environment that's not conducive to optimum plant growth, they are severely important in the plant. This particular product supplies active oxygen. It has properly complexed calcium, but also those soluble carbons that are used in the chelation and complexing processes are a great source for the starved plant cells in low light levels. 
That then gives enzyme strength and hardiness to promote photosynthetic activity. I hope that answers your question. No, that's perfect, thank you, Mike. So Christian, the last time I saw you was when I delivered the OxiCare for the trial. Just wondering if you can explain why this site was chosen here, please. Well, the reason for this location was because of, primarily because of the shade. Um, we're focusing, as you were talking about, the photosynthetic stresses. So we wanted to put the trial in an area where we had the shadiest and most stressed piece of turf through this late summer, autumn period, which is why we've cited it here, which as you can see, is right in the middle of a shade of a tree, uh, bottom of a slope. So you get a little bit of abiotic stress in terms of moisture as well. And so the key focus was how does Oxical work in providing benefit in a plant health point of view um, in this really shady environment? We're looking at uh, comparing Oxical versus areas where we haven't applied Oxical and we're looking at the plant health benefits very much as always from the, the, the eye of a greek keeper or a groundsman. So we're looking at the effects of the treatments on turf quality, turf colour, disease incidence um, and density of the swarm. And I could certainly say that we're now sort of two thirds of the way through the trial and we're seeing real benefits, visual benefits and significant differences between oxical treated turf and untreated turf. We're seeing benefits in terms of improvements in turf quality, turf colour and seeing lower disease incidence with the oxical because the plant is happier, it's healthier and in this period, this, this location, this period of the year where we've got plenty of abiotic and biotic stress all at once, yeah. the Oxical is certainly looking like it's helping the plant cope with all these different stresses. That's fantastic. So from our point of view, we operate in many sectors across all sports and one thing is for sure is shade affects the old turf. So as I understand it here, we're sort of facing south here, we've got this great big tree, we've got a bank of trees. How many hours of sunlight will this be getting every day? Well, at the moment, we'll be lucky if this is getting five or six hours of sunlight, and, and literally by the day now, it's getting that window's getting smaller and smaller. So mm. we're coming more and more shaded, more and more moisture on the surface, dew control, sort of temperatures are dropping, disease pressures building. So really, this is perfect hell for turf. Yes. And so this is the worst case scenario to be able to test, as always, your products under, so that we can make sure that it absolutely does what it says on the tip. Oh, that's fantastic. That's exactly what we wanted to hear, really, because you know we want to appeal to the the sports turf site that might have a, a poor position on tree that conflicts light, but also want to appeal to the the stadium manager who's really working in the dark. Um, if we can hopefully help them to complement their use of lighting rigs, etc., but maybe reduce the use of the lighting rig, that's that's really important to us. Absolutely. So this trial is very much fundamentally looking at the effect of turf in the shade with the Oxical and absolutely those results uh, will transfer across to our football colleagues where they're dealing with horrendous shade issues in stadia right the way from Premiership right the way through to non-league football and um, the benefits are gonna, uh, 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 will be tremendous and exciting to look at across not only golf but football as well so we look forward to seeing how this product develops and, and with research looking at perhaps other areas of, of sport as well. Fantastic and now you be able, might be able to give us an update on where we are with the trial now? Yep, so the trial is, is more or less two thirds of the way through um, and we're seeing really great benefits in terms of oxycal treated turf. Um, we're seeing improvements overall in the plant health which is resulting in improvements in quality, colour, and reductions in de disease incidence in, in plots where we're, we're, we're working and are treated with that oxycal. Not because of any physical control on the disease itself, mm. but just because the plant is happier and healthier. And you can see that when you look at the turf itself. Absolutely. Thanks for that. So Michael, let's have a little look in a bit more detail at the, the trial plots themselves. Okay. Um, so having had a look at them, can you tell which of the plot has been treated with oxycal and which is our untreated? Well, I'd say, looking at it, that's an oxycal treated plot and hopefully that's an untreated plot. Uh, no, absolutely bang on. Um, you're absolutely right. And it's pretty visual, isn't it? The differences between the two, between the two tr tr treatments. The untreated is looking paler, less happy, bit more disease in it, just generally 
anemic and unhappy at this time of year with all these biotic and abiotic stresses. Whereas the treated plot, where we put the oxycal down, that's absolutely looking darker, denser, happier, healthier, more at peace with its place under this massive great big tree we've absolutely. got here. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that, that for me, it sort of encapsulates what we're seeing with this trial in just that, those two pictures. Sort of the picture says a, a thousand words and it's absolutely true in this case. Oh yeah, well after three applications, and one more application to go and three more weeks of assessment, really pleased so far looking to see how the, the trial finishes. Absolutely. And so Graham, we kind of brought you in at the deep end here, you haven't really seen much of this trial. So what do you think? What are your perception? Oh, it's, it's amazing, Christian. Um, like you said, this is my first day on site today. So to be able to come here and quite clearly validate what we've heard, what we heard from the US before we brought the products over, uh, it's really pleasing. It's really important to see, but really pleasing to see. Absolutely, and I guess from your point of view, to be able to continue to see your solutions backed up by science must be really pleasing and important for you to see. That's what we do. That's what it's all about. It's it's so vitally important. It's the it's the cornerstone of everything that Aquatrols is about. So yes, uh, this is this is one element. We continue to have various other trials on site involved in water water management, etc. Our bread and butter, if you like. But uh, we we look forward when we're seeing results like this. We really look forward to continuing to expanding to really offering um, solutions to. The problems out there in the in the turf market. No, it's fascinating, and thank you very much for to both you and Michael for joining us here today. As always, it's been a pleasure to welcome you to the SDRI, and and a pleasure to be able to run trials with you guys. And so, just to finish off with, I hope everyone can join us at four o'clock on Thursday for our online Q and A session. We'll have to be behind a computer, but um, it's been a pleasure to have uh, you guys here in the flesh. Likewise, Christian, thank you very much for the opportunity. It's a shame that the people aren't here today to, to see the sites for themselves, but I think what you're doing is a great, uh, a great incentive and I uh, hope it's well attended on Thursday. Perfect.